human-animal hybrids at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Hong Kong is a delightful police state, and the Chinese Communist Party celebrates its 100th birthday. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Well, do we have a doozy of a story for you today. So by now you know how the U.S. was partially funding gain-of-function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, where many suspect the coronavirus pandemic leaked from. Just a reminder, gain-of-function research is where you make a virus more deadly or contagious to humans. Supposedly this research is done to prevent pandemics. Not working so well, is it? But anyway, you might be wondering, how did researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology take bat coronaviruses and make them contagious to humans? Well, their answer was human-animal chimeras. That's an uh, artistic depiction. A human-animal chimera is what you get when scientists inject an animal with human cells or engineer them with human DNA so the animal has certain human characteristics. For example, a lot of research is done on humanized mice. No, Seamus, you know what I meant. Humanized lab mice, thank you. Scientists like to test things on these humanized animals before giving a drug or vaccine to actual humans. In some cases, the humanized animals are actually used to create biological drugs, like certain cancer drugs. That itself isn't news. Scientists began creating humanized animals way back in the 1980s, presumably after a little inspiration. And at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the famous bat woman, Dr. Shi Zheng Li, had been working with humanized animals for more than a decade. Here's a paper from 2008 talking about using chimeras for coronavirus research. What is news is that we've learned researchers at the Wuhan Institute of Virology were specifically infecting humanized mice with bat coronaviruses in early 2019. And they were trying to see if they could get the bat coronaviruses to infect human tissues. I wonder if they were successful. But of course, we may never know for sure because the Chinese Communist Party is preventing any investigation into the Wuhan Institute of Virology. And they destroyed a lot of the lab's research last year. So we have no idea if their research was connected to the coronavirus that became a global pandemic. But at this point, the more I listen to the science, the more terrified I become. This is how we get Planet of the Mice. But with that out of the way, this week on July 1st, the world wished the Chinese Communist Party a happy 100th birthday. And there's a lot to celebrate. Not only has the Chinese regime killed way more people than any other regime in history, but it's also actively made the world a worse place. Global pandemics are just the tip of the iceberg. As U.S. Representative Mike Gallagher said on Twitter, the atrocities we're seeing in Xinjiang, Hong Kong, and Tibet today are not a new development. From the very start, brutalizing its own population was hardwired into the CCP's core DNA which is why he led a bipartisan resolution in the House of Representatives to send the CCP a birthday card, condemning China's gross violations of human rights. And considering the Chinese Communist Party is literally harvesting the organs of prisoners of conscience, when I say gross human rights violations, it covers all meanings of the word gross. But July 1st has an even more special meeting to the people of Hong Kong. Not only is it the 100th birthday party for the CCP, it's also the 24th anniversary of when China took control of Hong Kong in 1997, and the one-year anniversary of the national security law that took away Hong Kong's freedoms. Now, you might have heard the national security law resulted in a mass exodus of Hong Kongers from the city. I'm happy to say that's coming to an end, because in April, Authorities passed a law that could be used to stop people from leaving the city. Why would they want to leave? Hong Kong is becoming a delightful police state. Which is what a senior journalist for the now-defunct pro-democracy newspaper Apple Daily 
find out when he was arrested at the airport this week. As pro-Beijing lawmaker Alice Mack said, if it's a police state, why not? I don't think there's any problem with a police state. When we say a police state, I will view the other side. That is, the emphasis on security. Let's just hope Alice Mack doesn't have a secret world like Alex Mack, or else she'll be in big trouble. But to help in the transition to becoming a police state, Hong Kong's security chief, John Lee, has been promoted to the number two official. There's certainly a lot to celebrate. But please don't, because Hong Kong police have refused to allow a rally marking the handover. And it's not just Hong Kong winning at human rights. China overall has the best human rights in the world. I'll show you how after the break. Welcome back. To mark the 100 year anniversary of the Communist Party, the Communist Party released a white paper about how great human rights are in China. For 100 years, the CPC has always put people first, applying the principle of universality of human rights in the context of the national conditions. Yeah, human rights aren't universal. Each country decides for itself what human rights means. The West shouldn't force its values on China. The Uyghurs are very happy living in their police state paradise. So stop talking about them. How does China define human rights? China's white paper says it regards the rights to subsistence and development as the primary and basic human rights, and believes that living a life of contentment is the ultimate human right. Like how the Great Leap Forward resulted in so much food production, people had too much to eat, and then had to fast to lose weight. Unfortunately, 45 million people accidentally ended up fasting to death. We just did an episode about the Great Leap Forward, so check it out if you'd like to learn more. Good news! The CCP is bringing its version of human rights to the rest of the world. According to rights group Safeguard Defenders, the UN is helping China expand its global policing. Are you saying we can all benefit from the wonderful kind of police state they have in Hong Kong? The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, essentially the UN's anti-corruption body, has signed a cooperation agreement with China's National Supervision Commission, its massive extrajudicial policing force, and is refusing to release the secret content of this agreement. And everyone loves a secret, so how could that be a bad thing? Now don't get crazy. China's National Supervision Commission is only targeting a small minority of the world's population. Only about 300 million people. It exists outside of any country's judicial system, so it's basically a way to make people disappear. You know, like a magic trick. Everyone loves magic tricks. Especially university students. Especially Chinese university students studying in Australia. That's why the party is keeping a close eye on them. So they, or their family back home in China, can also disappear at any time. That's according to a new report by Human Rights Watch. Despite studying thousands of kilometres away from China, many Chinese and Hong Kong students in Australia are harassed and intimidated into censoring their speech and actions. I have to censor myself. I come to study in Australia and still I'm not free. There were attempts to dox me and someone leaked the name of the building I was living in. If you protest against the Chinese Communist Party abroad, they will find people you love to make you pay. Yes, the Chinese Communist Party has a special kind of magic. That magic also includes manipulating American businesses into serving Beijing's interests. Or after the break. Welcome back. According to an upcoming report from the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, U.S. businesses are receiving guidance and direction from Chinese officials to influence business operations, investment strategy, and strategic directions. I don't know, that sounds a bit far-fetched to me. In unrelated news, Nike CEO says Nike is a brand that is of China and for China. Must be all that forced ethnic slave labor. Nike is a brand of China's forced labor and for China's authorities. 
Nike. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Of course, since the Nike CEO says Nike is a brand that is of China and for China, I guess that means it's not the brand of America, so we should probably all stop buying it. But if the Chinese Communist Party has its way, Nike won't be the only company continually kowtowing to the Chinese regime. Every company and government really should as well, if they know what's good for them. That was one message from Xi Jinping's speech celebrating the party's anniversary. That was after a week of celebrations that included a very normal art performance that did not look anything like a dystopian Apple ad or North Korea on steroids. In his speech at Tiananmen Square, Xi Jinping said that we will never allow any foreign force to bully, oppress, or subjugate us. Anyone who would attempt to do so will find themselves on a collision course with a great wall of steel forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. That's at least according to the official translation. But as others pointed out, the original Chinese is a bit bloodier than that. The term she used literally means people would have their head broken and blood flowing, which sounds a little more violent. So a better translation might be that people who try to cross the Chinese Communist Party will have their skulls crushed against a great wall of steel. Now that's going back to the party's bloody roots. So with that, let's all wish the Chinese Communist Party a sweet good night on its 100th birthday party. It'll be easy to sleep in the quiet, dark night since China is facing its worst power shortage in a decade. I mean, as long as all the threats of crushing your skull don't keep you awake. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, fans who support us and our efforts to expose the truth about the Chinese Communist Party by contributing through the crowdfunding website Patreon. Mark Hewitson asks, do you think the CCP is making Bitcoin crash so they can buy them all up at a cheaper rate? That's an excellent question. China recently shut down over 90% of its Bitcoin mining. And that's just the latest in a series of restrictions aimed at curbing crypto in China. The result was a huge drop in the value of Bitcoin, as well as other cryptocurrencies. A big reason the Communist Party is doing this is to promote its own digital currency. But I really wouldn't be surprised if Many top party officials are using the crash in Bitcoin prices to buy it up. Even if your average Chinese person is forbidden from buying Bitcoin, top party officials love to do things like that to increase their wealth, and especially transfer their ill-gotten fortunes into a form that can't be easily taken away by the party. After all, just because we're communists doesn't mean we can't make a little money, right? Thanks for your question and your support, Mark. And big thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored on Patreon. We could not do this show without you. So thank you for joining us in the fight to expose the Chinese Communist Party to the world. If you're interested in joining, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. You'll get a bunch of cool perks, including the chance to have me answer your question on the show. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.